okay, two things. What the hell kind of swing was this guy in? Because I, I think the swings must be totally different there than they are here. Because I don't think you could actually get stuck in a child swing here. Unless you had like four asses. Um, and could you imagine being the first guy on the scene? How would you have not been able to resist just zipping home, grabbing the video... <laughs> you know, the VCR, no, not the VCR, the video camera thingy, and, and just walking up going, hi, dude, what you doing? And then going, just get me the F out, damn it. Just hanging around. <laughs> just swinging. Okay, so I'm I'm looking at a kid's swing right now, and I could see how that would work, actually. Okay. It's, um... It's hard to ex how, it's hard to explain. It's more of a visual, but um, I guess I'll post the link right now. It's basically a um, a box, and there's straps on all sides to keep the kid kind of locked into it. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're a dumbass, dude. You're a dumbass. I mean, you're a genius. Yeah, he's so smart. <laughs> that that almost deserves a Darwinism. Or a Darwin Award. Mm-hmm. Mm, just about. But not quite, because he's still alive. But anyway. Okay. Hang on a sec. Oh, you stupid thing. I have an ant crawling across my screen. Go away. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um, dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead <laughs> no, Sorry. I just swept it off the screen. It's not dead. They smell one. Forcefully they. into the wall, and then it went... <laughs> <laughs> it's alive, it's alive. No, um, okay, next one's mine, and then I'll do my review of, of the TV show that I have been reviewing the last few weeks. Okay, oh, Armless God. Archer setting world records. Yes, you heard me right. Okay, if you ever wondered what, a, what determination looks like, take a good long stare at Matt Strutzman. You wouldn't be the first. Strassman was born without arms, but he comp compensates with creatively there uh, with creativity and the will to succeed. Even at a young age, I remember always trying to do stuff, and I'd ask for help with my with my parents, and my parents would always tell me in a nice way, "Try to figure it out first before we help you." He says he turned his determination into success on the archery range. Two years ago, we figured out his unique r release system. Strutzman adjusts the bow with his toes, holds it with his right foot, and brings up the arrow with his left. My feet are my hands, so I just hold it the same way they would with their hands, he explains. Using a release aid, he hooks the string to his shoulder before taking aim and letting go. He's vying for a spot in the 2012 US Paralympic team. In September, Strutzman hit a shot from more than two football fields away. 230 yards to be exact, breaking a Guinness World Record for the longest shot on target. It was 14 yards better than the old one set by a man who had both arms. Holy dooly. I believe how a shot is an, a is an advantage because I use my leg and my leg is the strongest part of my body, he said. Not counting his inner drive, of course, which has him eyeing the able-bodied competition with one ultimate goal. <laughs> I want to be the best archer in the world, hands down. The best archer in the world, Strassman said. Oh, God. But can I just say, if he's firing a bow, he's not exactly armless anymore, is he? Huh. No. No, he's definitely armed. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to laugh at that. Hey, he's the one who started the jokes. With the hands down thing. <laughs> oh, that's almost as bad as the one arm man applauds effort. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, man. That's a brilliant effort. We applaud you and not in the nasty way. Yes, that, definitely. That... that is awesome. It is amazing to see people like this. You know, it's people like these that, you know, they have the right, they have the excuse to sit at home and do nothing and just mope and you know, be miserable in their bedrooms, but they don't. They get out, they do things, 
that conquer this handicap, and they become some of the greatest people in the world. He beat someone with arms. <laughs> That's just brilliant, man. That's great. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. That was an awesome joke. Anyway, yes, yeah, so great job. That is awesome. Excellent. Okay, so on to my review of the TV show that I should have done at the beginning of the show, but I forgot it. Okay, so this week's episode of The One. The One. The One. Okay, Australia's Search for the Greatest Psychic or some shit. Yeah, I forgot to look at the piece of paper. Okay, they had two challenges this week. Okay, the psychics had to identify which one of six identical hammers was used in a fit of rage to smash up a car. Now, how they did this was they had six sledgehammers. They had each one of the um, sledgehammers was used to bash this car, but they only had one person that had actually used one of the sledgehammers on stage and they had to match the sledgehammer that that guy used with the actual sledgehammer he had used. And you know how many of them got it out of seven? Three people got it. Wow. How cool is that? That's awesome. I I don't think I could ever use any of my abilities on, like, command. It just kind of comes to me, you know? Yeah. Oh, it was insane. And then the second challenge was they had to find a man who was locked in a boot of a car in a huge public parking lot. They had 55 cars in their search area. And only one person got the right car. Hmm. Most of them got pretty close, actually. Most of them were either uh, sort of, you know, one car away or they were across the road from where the car was parked. So, you know, they'd push the the beeper thing to unlock it to see which car it was, and it was like, you know, all I had to do was turn around. Oh, that just sucks. I know, but the guy who got it, Greg found the right car, and he was just flabbergasted. He's like, oh my god, oh my god. So, yay. But, unfortunately, the person who had to go home was Maria Alita. She was brilliant. I loved her so much. She's such a character, and she's from the Gold Coast, so that's even better. Um, Yeah, so that's my roundup of this week's The One. The One. You know, honestly, people give too much criticism to these psychics. I mean, it's a hard gift. <clears throat> I mean, like I said earlier, with a lot of this, a lot of it just kind of comes to you. You don't really, you don't control it. It controls you. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, who was it? Anyway, one of the ladies who is an empath, you know, she found last week's challenges really difficult because I had to go into a house that had had a murder happen 30 years ago. And that to her was as fresh as the day it happened. So, mm. um, yeah. I feel for her. <laughs> yeah. Bad pun. That was a really bad pun. Yeah, but, you know, it, it it matters. So the fact that she was affected that way was, you know, kind of a bit heart-wrenching for people who can sort of empathize with her. Coming from someone who has just broken out into tears for no reason and then realized that it was someone that I'm close to that I hadn't even spoken to. Yeah, I definitely understand that. And it's kind of, it's crazy. It really is. And um, what's hard is, especially being like bipolar and all, it's hard to tell if it's you or someone else. Yeah, because, you know, one moment you'd be laughing your head off and the next moment you're like, 